Hey everybody, it's Sophia Marco, Dish Out on the Movies. Today we are doing Short Circuit 2. Wow. The follow-up to the Short Circuit 1, which was made in the 80s. So this was probably made in the 80s too, because it didn't come too long after, right? Yeah, yeah I think <laughs> just two years. That's not bad. Maybe. That's probably the best. Anyway, I was expecting something to be not good about it. I don't know why. Maybe something Mark was well, said. I was expecting it to not be good because the poster kind of has a straight-to-DVD look to it. And also because uh, the main characters from the first one aren't in it. And so I wonder why Johnny Five would be not with the main characters anymore. And so that was kind of worrisome to me. And also because people hated it, like... On Letterboxd, it only has a 2.5 out of 5. Really? As if, like, it's a terrible, bad movie. It's not. And it's like, wow, this this movie's like one of the, <coughs> the best movies that we've ever seen. I mean, I don't, I, I'm having trouble seeing that another movie or thinking that another movie will be better than this by the end of the year. Because this was, like, the, the best that you can get. I uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. I was really surprised. And I like surprises. It's yeah. still been stressful. The weather is really cold and miserable, and it's just making things harder. And So it's nice to have something light, funny, entertaining, and a surprise. Because, like Marco said, it's funny. Because, you know, last movie, we told what we liked about it. We said we really like that Indian guy. <laughs> yeah, and he's not Indian. He's and Fisher Stevens that was... of all people. I mean, I've seen that guy in a million things, but he's he's probably this is probably his first role. No. No. Well, he was no. very young when he did this movie. But this was shocking because I I thought he was an Indian guy. I did not know. Like there was no hint at all that that it was a white guy in any way. Like, it was so bizarre learning that he was not actually Indian. And just the fact that, like, nowadays, like, I can't think of, like, a single Indian character that I've seen in, like, a movie. Like, except for, I guess, the cab driver in the, the Deadpool series who's, like, hardly in the movies. Oh, well, there was a but, Christmas like, movie that came out. No, that doesn't count. What's that, a Hallmark movie or something? Yeah. Or oh, wait, no, there's that Norwegian Christmas. Oh wait, or... no, there's that Kumail guy. Is, it, is that guy Indian or or is he? No, yeah, I think he is. I don't know. Or is he Middle Eastern? I can't remember. Uh, I'm not really but sure. But he, he kind of sucks. You know, he's he's not a good actor, really. He's okay. He he just kind of plays average. himself. Very he average. he's a comedian. He just kind of plays himself. You know, <laughs> his best movie was basically a movie about his life with his relationship with his current wife, and, like, it really wasn't very good. I know. Uh, in comparison to this. What's the name of that show? Who? With the uh, geniuses. Safi, I'm talking about movies. Oh, okay, well, there's... Movies. A, I, don't, I haven't seen... I don't think... I can't think of any movie, but I can think of... A, movies. A comedy TV show. What? Uh, with the geniuses. What genius? professors and... Professor? Who's that guy? One of the... the what, the main, West Wing? No, that's a that's a movie about politics, or that's a show about politics. Well, there's there's plenty of geniuses in politics, <laughs> right, Safi? Okay, I'll think about it. I haven't well, seen it in a while. It anyways, in a lot of uh, you know, lots of you can see it. You know, like this is whatever. this character is probably the greatest Indian character I've ever seen he in does movie an excellent job. or television. Like he. Mar both Marco and me, because we do know some Indian people, and I mean, a lot. He's like, t he's totally just like them. <laughs> he talks like them. He he's... looks like them. Everything, his he's... mannerisms, everything. And I'm not. That's I'm not making fun or being racist. He should be he did given really good. He should be given like an Indian, <laughs> a complimentary India citizenship card for his portrayal of this character. Because I feel like he's probably the second best thing to these movies, uh, aside Johnny Five. And so the fact that like he did such a good job that he's that memorable, he stands out that much, 
it's really kind of amazing. Well, they must have thought and, so, too, because he was one of the main stars of the show. And I, I just have to say that I really don't care that he's doing quote-unquote blackface. I, I really don't give a fuck. It, it's irrelevant. Like, uh, because, number one, <coughs> the problem with blackface is... Number one, like, you're doing it when there's actual Indian actors who could do it. And number two, you're most, most of the time they do it to mock that specific <coughs> race. And in this case, I genuinely don't think an Indian actor could have played this character as good as this guy did. Well, they may uh, not have had anybody available anyway back in that time. And I don't know who it would have been. Number two. This is 70s. Num- no, this is the 80s. In the 80s, I mean... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, Safi stuck in the seventies with the the feminist movement and the Vietnam and uh, shit like that. Taxi Driver, uh, the the French Connection. That was a good movie. I, I, mean, I haven't I seen see that Taxi one. Driver. You should. Uh, no, I don't want to. You'll you'll <laughs> it's spoil than it. Taxi Driver. No, Taxi Driver's a masterpiece. So, anyways, uh, another thing though is that. This character is not mocking Indian people. No. And it's also, it's like he does it right. And, like, honestly, I literally don't care if someone does blackface if they do it right and if they do a good job. Like, if that guy in Breakfast at Tiffany's, if he had done more than ching chong, bing bong, you know, then I would have actually liked that character in that movie. But, like, he really stuck out in that movie is just, like, the worst part of the movie because he just it, it was it was poor it was very poor and uh, you know the opposite of this character where like this is like an actual character and he's like a fully fleshed out character uh, he's sympathetic he's a lot more like a nerdy scientist type of guy than Steve Gutenberg mm-hmm. and it's like it's really kind of hilarious that like the best Indian character that I've ever seen. Is a white is a white guy with with brown paint on his face. <laughs> I didn't know he had brown paint. He, well, he had. They have to. They have to make well, make his skin Indian. Liquid makeup. You just get a darker. I know. Well, that's it's brown paint. Like they painted it on his face, and it's like wow. Uh, that's that's pretty good. <coughs> like they should. Uh, <coughs> You know, I think that maybe the reason they haven't done a new short circuit is because they know that in the back of their minds that they're not going to be able to find an Indian actor who can do what no, he I did in the that. original movies. I don't, think, I don't agree with Cause that. Because what Indian actor is going to do what this what? guy did? Like, oh, nobody. Well, the guy nobody. that comedy show. What comedy? With There's no other, comedy show. Those, those other... What genius? Baby geniuses? No! The... <coughs> I just can't think of the of the name. I well, didn't watch then, every episode. Then it doesn't Johnny exist. Johnny Galecki in it. No, well, who's that? And, uh, Johnny and Galecki? You don't know Johnny Galecki? Is. Who the fuck is that? Oh, my God. Some kind of weirdo <laughs> car salesman? Who, no, Marco, who, he's not a car salesman. Who likes he to grease people's hands? Orchard and who's that? Oh, what's California. what's the wine? A front for car salesmanship? No, Marco, he's not a Cheap car cars? Sp- okay, but you don't know what you're talking about. Somebody well, who's quiet. Johnny Go Lucky? Go Lucky. Go Lucky. <laughs> who's that? Well, look it up. Where did he come from? Okay, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Safi's just resorted to her personal device, which isn't allowed in class. Well, too bad, since so. you were being difficult well you, you just make up things and, no i don't i mean who's johnny go lucky well, he's not the one who's uh so just be, let's keep going i this. love this character he's probably one of the best movie characters ever Big created Bang theory oh that's piece of shit show yeah. ew I you you think it. that that indian actor could do what this guy you, did you, you don't you make, think that that guy was a good Indian character? All they did was just make fun of nerd people and Indian people. I like the sh- I thought it that was a show very is show. that show is the biggest piece of fuck. 
that shows the fucking piece of dog shit that just shit on everything and shit on intelligence. I've never watched it. No, I've seen plenty. I've seen enough. That show needs to die. It did. No, it didn't. It got fucking young Sheldon, and now the spinoff is getting a spinoff. It's Kunal Nayar. Who the fuck is that? He's an that idiot. shitty actor, that shitty show oh. with the fake geniuses and the fake fucks. Marco. Fuck that fucking show. Okay, oh now back to the good movie. Oh my God. So this movie is all about not Johnny Go Lucky uh, and uh, this Indian guy. And he is now not working at Nova anymore. In fact, uh, I don't think anyone is because... You know, they're they're not even a part of this movie at all. No. They're basically irrelevant. Well, which, actually, they did show... What was that airplane thing at the very beginning? That that was the only know. part of the sh- movie. It almost like it didn't go with it. Yeah, like, the beginning of the movie made me really worry because they played this crappy mu- music that reminded <laughs> me of the first movie, and I thought, uh-oh, this is going to be, like, another tough ride to get through. Uh well, not, the movie was, the first one wasn't a tough ride to get through, but some of that music was really annoying yeah, it was like and this, overly obnoxious. That's what it was. Uh, it, it was not very long. Militaristic and it music. it stuck out at the very beginning, and then you never saw anything like yeah. that again. That, uh, in fact, yeah. I thought they were going to pop up near the end. Yeah. But nope. Never showed no. up. It was really odd. They could have just cut that. I that didn't even have to be in the movie. So you had him and Chuck from Better Call Saul, and they That's were they were standing on the street in New York, uh, selling things. And he <laughs> was sell he, uh, Chuck was selling fake, fake watches from Tiffany's. Fake speaking Rolexes. speaking of breakfast at Tiffany's, and then the Indian guy. What's his name again? What's Fisher the Indi- Stevens? No, what's the character's name? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Ben. Okay. Ben Ben 10. Okay. (laughs) Ben 10 was selling little mini Johnny Five robots that that are like toys. And they were, there weren't many. And, you know, he's a genius with making these kinds of uh, robots. You know, he was part of the genius team from the last movie. So, yeah. And they're side by side. And that's how it all begins. And basically the story <laughs> is all about him teaming up with Chuck to make and sell these robots with the help of Johnny Five, who was delivered to them for some reason as like a present by uh, he was going, Stephanie he, and whoever. He was sent there to help them. It was sent by, the, uh, you know, the couple that was in the first but like, movie. I, I can't remember why they said that they sent it, because it was so, like... He used to help them make the robots. Okay, because it was such an excuse. Like, it was <laughs> such a a quick answer. Like, it reminded me of, like, in the Monk movie at the beginning, where they're like, how's Sharona? She's great! How's that character? He's great! It reminded me of that. Well, what happened is... One of the little robot toys got loose, and it went all over the place. It went in this building, and went out, ended up in this toy department. It looked under women's skirts. Yeah, it, it went all uh, over, and it and it smoked cigarettes and stuff. And this, so this girl who <laughs> can't get any of her toy ideas to sell, she finds the robot and she shows it to the guy, and then she goes to the curb where. Where the Indian guy is selling, Ben is selling the robot. Ben ten. And he he she he starts. She makes a deal. She wants what was it a thousand of them or five thousand yeah. by October fifteenth. Because she needs she conveniently she was a part of this uh, business that needed to sell toys over Christmas, and so uh, she thought that the Johnny Five mini robots would. Uh, make for good toys which i think they would because yeah, they would. i would They're like cool. i would like a johnny five uh and basically this girl she is the love interest of the movie <coughs> and her name is huge upgrade because that's exactly what she was she was better 
than Allie Sheedy in every way, shape, or form. She didn't have a grandmother's haircut. She didn't have an obnoxious voice. Uh, she's a very good love interest character and a good uh, character. So I was glad of that, too. Uh, in fact, what I know her from, because I've seen her before, is I know her from a Tales from the Crypt episode, which is actually one of my favorite ones. So I thought that was a nice surprise because, you know, all, this, the cast of this movie was really good. Like, the only... I guess negative about the movie is that I kind of thought the villains were a little weak. Like, if the villains were more intimidating and more uh, defined, then I would say the movie is an A+. Mm -hmm. But it's, it, the villains are kind of, like, generic. Kind of like an, uh, that, that movie about the mentally ill people who get uh, loose in New York... Remember that? Yeah. With Michael Keaton, like, <coughs> the villain in that movie, he was kind of not well-defined either, but, you know, that was still, like, a perfect movie. The Dream Team. And this is very similar to the Dream Team in that I think it's it's almost like a perfect movie. So. Well, um, so the thing about Michael Ankeem He's not really very reputable. He, he, in fact, he's borrowed money from loan sharks, and he hasn't been able to repay them. So he needs to make quick money, or he's going to lose his body parts. So, they, so he says, or lose his life. But if they if they made him lose his life, they wouldn't get their money back. So I don't think that's right. They're just gonna rough him up. A Sophie, lot. that's what they do. Well, anyway. Eventually. <laughs> He takes advantage of Ben, and and so uh, Ben, anyway, he can't... There, there's also something else going on in the movie. There's a bank nearby, and you have these two bad guys, and they keep c coming... They want to get... They, they come to rent this huge building. The building's going to be sold in a few months, so they got this cheap rent. Michael Onking did. And uh, it kind of like adjoins a bank. And so these bad guys are in there. They want them out. So they're trying to, like, sabotage what they do. In fact, they came in, and they, they had handmade all these robots <coughs> because they don't have the money to pay for a big, you know, assembling assembly line, like in a manufacturing plant. So basically, they have put things together themselves. Well, these bad guys came in and destroyed everything because they want them out. So, yeah, this whole... Thing, this dichotomy of these, these stories where you have the Indian guy is wanting to make these toys and he has to have so many of them by a certain date and the other people are going against them because they want them out so they can steal from the bank. <coughs> so what happens is this Johnny, the real Johnny Five, the big robot that's a human, has turned into a human because it got struck by lightning. This was brought up in the last movie. Sophie, we're not going through well, this whole movie. Well, they send it to them. And so he's I, going well, to help. I already said that. So he's, he's going to help. So, that's the, so you have these two <laughs> opposing forces throughout the entire movie. Well, I'd say one of my favorite things was uh, how they almost like applied civil rights <laughs> issues to Johnny Five. Because, yeah. like, it was very interesting. It, it was really funny how they did that, and how uh, he was doing a demonstration at the corporation. And uh, what one of the uh, one of the people working there was like, The last thing we need is a robot who wants civil rights or something. Yeah. I thought that was really funny, yeah. that was a good line. And uh, <coughs> I don't know, just jo Johnny Five is once again a fantastic movie character. Yes. And it's just like I said in the last review where I said that, you know, you, you made this really good movie character. All you have to do is plug him into a great situation for him to be in. And they did. Yep. Because this movie's like perfect, like almost perfect. And it's like, I, I think it's way better than the first. I think it's probably one of the best movies ever. So. Well, they kind of expanded the role. 
yeah. his role, and they expanded Fisher Stevens's role. And so, <coughs> and everybody else is really supporting yeah. a supporting type actor. This is kind of like the Better Call Saul of Short Circuit, except for like the good Better Call Saul, you know, seasons one through three. You know, that's what it reminds me of because it is it is kind of like a spinoff because, like, it's not a big blockbuster road chase action like uh, Sonic the Hedgehog or Iron Giant. It's it's like a, a comedy uh, action movie, and it's, it's really, really good. Yeah. What was your favorite scene, Safi? Well, I have to think about it for a little bit. Really? Okay. I, uh, I really, uh, well, they have this scene where, they have this one thing where the, what the, they don't want to tell the robot, Johnny Five, the big guy, that he's in a city because he wants input all the time. And the city, instead of being quiet countryside where there's fewer people, the city has a lot going on. And so they realize if he leaves, the factory to go sightseeing or whatever, he's just going to be, he won't get his work done. They need him to make these little robots because he wants input and he wants to go everywhere. So he did this, he did get out and uh, he went to these uh, these people, He they were, uh, maybe they were stereotypes, I don't know, but they were like a gang <laughs> and they had, you know, the the the... But you know what, Safi? They were played by actual minorities, <coughs> so and he helped. You know, them you steal. can't complain about that. He helped them steal all these things out of cars, and you could see about fifty cars lined up on that was a funny. on a you know a alleyway, and all their doors were open. And then he had a, a Johnny Five the robot held a stack of radios and all kinds of different electronic devices that were in the car and he had helped them because they said they were what they say they were a repair shop or something yeah and they he was he he was gullible <laughs> and he thought that he could really they and they appreciate i mean they respected yeah. him enough to know that he could do this and get those things out of the cars <laughs> which i thought was interesting and uh, so I thought that was cute. He had all this huge stack of the stuff in his arms, and there. And then you hear the uh, car alarms going off. And so anyway, and then he found out later they were going. They were stealing. They used him, and they were stealing. And he knew it was wrong, but it, it wasn't anything. He didn't go back and get, you know, revenge or anything. They just went on, and, and it was a lesson that he learned. That's it. What I would like is instead of a <laughs> short circuit three movie where you know that they're going to ruin it and they're going to make it a, an agenda movie. And, I don't think they could do you know, it now. They just make it an agenda movie. I don't have any faith in They make it suck. What I would, what I would like them to do is, you know how they did the Back to the Future Telltale game? Well, do a short circuit three Telltale game. Of course, I think Telltale doesn't exist anymore, but some other video game company <laughs> do like a game like the Telltale games, but with short circuit. Mm. And all, or also like it would be really fun in like a GTA game or a Saints Row game to have like a Johnny Five robot character that you can be in the city. Like, because he's just, he's an awesome character. He has so many different things he can do. The fact that he talks is really nice because nowadays there's a lot of these movies and shows that they're not very good with dialogue <coughs> uh, or they'll have a character who doesn't talk. And, that's and they skill. think that that's good. Uh, when you're writing, that dialogue is a major skill. Like uh, that Terrifier series, you know, you have that clown character who's supposedly like a new horror icon and he doesn't even talk he doesn't even say anything yeah, it's mostly he, and faces and smile he just makes faces and makes gestures and it's like what the f is this i much prefer a character like johnny five who's got an actual character well i would say maybe my favorite scene is when 
uh, Chuck uh, helps Johnny Five get repaired at Radio Shack. Yeah. I thought that that was really funny and clever. And also, what I really liked about that was that, you know, they did realize that Chuck kind of was betraying them a little bit because he just he really needed to make money mm. for the uh, the loan shark he people. He admitted it to them. Yeah. He admitted well, it to Johnny Five. I was really happy that instead of him becoming a bad guy, that he still remained a heroic character because he was like a, a conflicted heroic character. And I thought that that was really cool. It's like so much different than like nowadays <coughs> where like if, if you if you had a male character like this and they were like this, they'd be the bad guy from now on. Yeah. And you'd have the strong woman and she would be uh, criticizing him and she would be the hero and you know we all know what they would do nowadays uh but so this movie is uh pretty perfect so so it's just very entertaining and i recommend it i recommend the first one and then you'll know the second one coming along which like i said i guess we've had this happen a few times where the second one's been uh better or, yeah or just as at least as good <coughs> And, in this, and this was better. Yeah, in this case, I think the reason why it's better is because, number one, it doesn't feel so stereotypical and so predictable like the first one. And they develop their characters even more. And number two, it's basically like they said, oh, you like these elements from the first movie? Well, we're going to give you those elements for the whole movie. And yeah. you're you're going to get a ton of that. So it's like... The ultimate fan service plus a good story, plus good new characters, uh, and I. It's sad they didn't make a third one because they're not going to make a third one nowadays. They're going to make a, you know, a woke reboot uh, on Disney Plus or something, and it's going to be all about uh, whamming. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's just. Uh... It's going to be about... I'm saying they're going to wake up and it's... They're going to have to return to... Normalcy? <laughs> I don't know what you want to call They're going to have to write the ship back. It's normalcy, because normalcy means, like, good storytelling. Well, that's just and the key ingredient. they're just not doing that anymore. That's like an essential ingredient in making anything is a good story, good characters. And the thing is about, like, let's say the Indian guy, for example... Fisher Stevens, who's not Indian at all, he he was really he never a supporting character in the first movie. Yeah. He was not really the main character. He did have a big part, but he was only a... Because it was the other guy who was the main character. Yeah, the boring Steve Gutenberg yeah. character. And, and Fisher uh, Stevens was, in this movie, though, he was one of the main guys. And this is one of the few... <coughs> One of the few side characters who's actually really good at being a main character. Yeah, and he like, is too. He's he's really good as the main hero. And I would say that's the number one, well, one of the biggest reasons why I don't want a Short Circuit 3 now. Is because I don't want to see Short Circuit without Fisher Stevens playing Ben 10. Uh, I mean, in, in the movie, he never says, thank you, come again. He never says uh, curry anything. You know, he's he's a character. He's a real character. And I actually saw online that apparently he apologized for playing that character. And it's like, why the fuck would you apologize for playing the greatest Indian character in movie and TV history? Like, <laughs> he's so much better than, like, Kelly from The Office and, like, Slumdog Millionaire, like, he, he's, like, the greatest. Like, I think that India... Well, it was respectful. He they should somebody respectfully. I, I really think, too, that, like, India as a country should, like, put him on their flag, his character, because, like, he's, that, he's such a great India character. <laughs> he's, he's a lot better than what we've seen... <laughs> And, uh, well, it's just like Tony Hellerman <laughs> creating those Navajo characters. 
he was he was he's not he wasn't Tony Hillerman was not Native American at all. No. In any way, and he got tons of awards from Native Americans, from the Navajo, etc., because he portrayed them. You know the characters, people, because he portrayed them like they would be in real life, respectfully. Yeah. And good stories involving them. And, I mean, look, and nothing against their culture. You just can incorporating all of that. And you can have real, <laughs> you can have real Indian characters in the mix. Like you could have a scene where him and the girl from Tales from the Crypt, they're having dinner with his family and you could have like a brother and sister and the parents and they'd all be real Indian actors. Like you could do that. Well, you have like, more Indian actors now anyway available. Oh, but they're not going to be Fisher Stevens at all. No, but I No mean, Indian actor is going to be this we're talking character. talking about for a family thing or other actors would come in yeah. that would be supporting. Well, they're there. They're, they're around now. Yeah. They weren't back then. You know. No, they were few and far between. <coughs> That's not Fisher Stevens' fault. No, so, it's um, not. He did a great job. He's he's the. He was if, respectful and real. If he wasn't in the series, it wouldn't be a good series. My- Sorry, I have somebody who's trying to scratch a new chair. Somebody named Bernie. Well, it's a crappy chair anyway. I like so, that chair. Yeah, I bet you do. You you like a lot of shitty things like oh, the Big Big Bang Theory. I like the Big Bang Theory. I thought it was funny. Yeah, but I didn't watch it all it, the time. It's, and it's I didn't funny watch to, every episode. It, it's and funny I, to think that people would think it was funny. <laughs> it was funny. It was yeah. comedy. Really? I yeah. ne- I never got that. I thought it was like a uh, like a garbage show. No. Genre it was a comedy. garbage. No. Yes. So what would you rate Short Circuit to in terms of food? <coughs> well, I'll, I'll just give it my um, my favorite meal at Panera Bread, which supported me all during my 10-year, 10-year, well, it didn't wasn't there the whole 10 years, but at least the rest of it, the latter half of it, of when I was on a, taking chemotherapy pills once a day. And uh, what it is is uh, broccoli cheddar soup and a piece of bread. Like, a, what is that like? It's not brioche, but it's it's really good. It's just it's, it's a baguette. Perfect. It's a baguette, but it's just really delicious. You just get a piece of it, <laughs> <coughs> and then just this soup, and it's enough for me. It's great. And uh, the soup is interesting. It's not plain. It's not spicy. It's just perfect. And it has good ingredients. And then the bread is a good sustaining, uh, easy to eat, goes with the soup. I just thought that's it represents that movie perfectly. It's just what was nice, too, because it was a surprise. Because I wasn't expecting it to be good. Or entertaining. I thought it was going to be stupid. So, what did what did you rate it? Well, uh, I think about the main point to this movie was that they saw people review the first movie, and the people said, <coughs> "We really like Johnny Five. We really like that Indian guy." <laughs> and uh, g- give us more of that. And that's exactly what they did. Which is nice. And so, therefore, like that's a, it's one of the few times too where like they actually listen to the audience and give the audience what they want instead of pretending like you know they can do what they want to do and people still have to like it like you know Disney with their shitty ass Star Wars shit that they ruined There's Star there. Wars. Uh, you know we want to have Luke, <coughs> Luke, uh, Leia, and Han Solo together. Oh no, we can't ever do that. Uh, because that, no, we have to do what we want to do because we know better than George Lucas. Uh, so this movie, I would have to get it, uh, give it, I guess, uh, the birthday cake that I had last year because I really like mint, uh, cakes. I mean, chocolate cakes with mint frosting. 
that's the main type of birthday cake I like, and I asked for that, and I really feel like it was exactly what I asked for, and so, and it was also kind of unexpected, because it had a lot more of, like, a minty flavor, which was kind of, like, it was kind of weird at first, but then after I thought about it, it it's a, it was very similar to a peppermint patty. So it was basically like eating a peppermint patty cake, and that's what I would give this movie. So. All right. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and become one of our subscribers. And we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Bye.